I am your super robot king, and you shall all bask in my glory. Hello, and welcome to Blood Plot, wherein we cover giant robots from 40 years ago, but only from 18 years ago? This is the Mechanics Collection Brave Writing, as seen on an angle here, from the year of our Bandai Lords, 2002. This particular kit I've owned for at least 10 years. I can't really say how well it's held up. But first and foremost, the manual. So with that, let's take a nice close look at our hefty classic boy. He is a comp... No, what was the word I was just trying to say there? He is a mixture, a combination, that was the word, a combination of, I think, a couple of metal parts, but mostly plastic and some softer rubber parts that we're used to seeing... Actually, no, we don't see them very much anymore. Uh, if you own any of the Master Grade G Gundam kits, those are usually the materials that are, that the hands are made out of. And we have a couple of those pieces down in here. We've got rubber soles. The hands are rubber. As well as the waist here. This piece is made out of rubber. We're going to attempt to talk of articulation without becoming frustrated. Again, this was made in 2002 and I've owned this for a very long time. So because of the way that it's manufactured, or designed, and let's see if I can't bring that up particularly in the manual. So we're gonna look at this, this piece here in front of your camera. This is a very interesting set of clamps and pieces. You'll see this A part and this D part slide into the side. There's a ball and socket joint that is connected and held together by the force of screws. And then the arm is uh, rotated into position with one of the little keyholes down up right here. You can see on this D part right here there's a little peg that will slide into the very particular holes of the shoulder that do not show well in the camera. It's important to note that because of several things. This causes any kind of looseness that happens over time has made this shoulder very loose and droopy. But with the rotation, it's very stiff. Like, you get the movement and then it immediately droops out of place. I'm trying to show deep in there. Let me grab my secondary light. right in there. This is light, please. 
right inside of there. I will show this off a little bit more later. As you can see, it's already shown signs of gradual scratching. So even though your arm gets a fair amount of rotation, it doesn't really hold itself up very well, especially in, well, in particular this left arm of, that I have. The head does not stay attached very well, as witnessed by not touching it and it just fell off. This is your typical ball and socket situation. And the chin piece has also fallen off, so that's a problem we need to solve immediately. Well, like many things that fall off, it just vanished into the void. So we will continue, and I will post an update if I ever find that piece later. Very unfortunate and annoying. So as I was saying, a mere ball and socket joint that, given the space of the head, it does not really have much going on as far as movement. I'm going to set that aside for now because you're going to get in the way and probably fall off. Otherwise, the other arm has seemed to have held itself up over time and rotates with no issue. The shoulder piece in here is on a regular ball so it will move independently. More stuff will fall off. I hate to say that is a sign of age. It can't be a sign of age. I've got older kits that have held up better. And there goes a back piece that fell off. You need to come off. At the elbow, we have a very simple and basic 90 degree bend. The waist is very particular because of its design. This upper part will shift quite often. And without the head in the way, that means this collar will come right off as well. Which will allow us to see the mechanics inside of this young man. This old man, excuse me. This is not working as well as I hoped. As I tried to show up the inside. It's not. I'm sorry. That ended up being a small waste of time. So putting this collar back on before we use any other parts. This piece that came off is just an aesthetic cosmetic piece that goes on the back. Having it attached there. It doesn't even secure anything. At the waist, you get no rotation whatsoever. Let me let this light back in. At the legs, you will get from flat, it's your back, this is your forward, and your knee bend. And your foot cuff moves around like so. It's not very mobile, but I will give it points for coming with a plethora of accessories. If I can get this head back on, if I can get the head on, head on. You look like you're crying without your chin piece there. We have a hefty amount of accessories, some of which we will get to later than others. This is a... Well, hell, let's do it now. For later purposes, we are peeling this arm off to make it easier to show what's going on. This is the resting state of your arm accessory has many forms. Attaching this round piece. Combining as such a simple sandwich and planting it back on. 
you have your shield, the god block. If I can line it up, that's the only thing that's keeping it from going back in. It wasn't lined up. Like so. Taking this piece off. Sliding this piece on. You have your god boomerang. Once again, simply slides like so. And any configuration as such, we will go ahead and just put it back in God Block. We can remove this white piece here. Peel that out. Peel that out. And you can replace that with a longer form. Engage your God, uh, your God Breaker. But apparently, <laughs> it is very side specific. There we go. And as always, everything ideally fits on the arm when it doesn't want to fall off. On the other arm over here, we're going to have to remove this hand. Very squishy hand. We're going to peel this off because it's easier to work with. These yellow pieces will come out eventually, carefully. And we'll replace them with extended pieces, the parts that I prefer to use. Pop back in. As you see, I'm trying to be very careful by gently wedging things out because I'm lucky enough that I haven't broken anything on camera. I've just lost things on camera. And we'll slide that back in. With that, you have one part of your god arrow, and you can replace that with the pointing slash shooting finger. At least his arm does extend out this far, so you can get a bit of archery going on. Now the reason for taking off this entire other hand is we have a different style of arm that goes on there that gets a further bend than what you normally get. Plugging that. Uh, which order does that actually go in? I feel like there's an order here. Or not. I don't know. Probably not. There was not. With that, get it at your preferred angle and you can use your other hand pop that into place we're going to leave the wrist part off you will have to swap that over and pinching between his fingers you can have your god gorgon or gogun g-h-o-g-u-n i wrote it out in google translate that's how it came out and gogun doesn't mean anything but with that, Raideen can point out, charge his arrows, and shoot down his foe from far away. Now, lastly, the part that I absolutely dread, because I feel like this will be the point where I might break something. So we're going to disconnect all this stuff. Try to ignore the wobbly head. Pull this arm out. And we're going to replace this arm in. Simply and go ahead and take the head off. Because we are expected to remove this arm unit. And it's very, very particular. We're going to have to fight with the chest again. About the position wherein we prevent that from happening. This is what I was concerned with, and you can see inside there the little point where it wants you to rotate this to a very specific angle blindly and slide this out. Now what I have to do first is actually go through the battle of getting it to go back in. 
Now you can kind of see a little more clear down in there. But this was not very well designed back in 2002. It may even be easier once I rotate this other arm and squeeze it out. See, that one came out just fine. But now we have to go to war. And you're going to have to separate this chest. Just so we can get this peg back in place. And I've tried in the past. Tightening the screws does not really get anywhere. It's just poorly designed. It, it wasn't... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what, what happened here. I'm not a designer. I don't know what kind of catastrophe went on behind the scenes between one of Tomino's first mecha works. The moral of the story is, though, is we get these pieces here. These are additional wings with claws. I had to paint the tips on there. That time I just dropped it out of my hand. Being inherently clumsy. And those, without any tab, just slot into place. The second one goes in here, perhaps. Of course, I haven't done this in 500 years, so I don't quite remember. Oh, yes, because it's that. No? Wait. Have I done this wrong? I have done this wrong. I've done them on the wrong sides. I feared as much, but the legs will just barely fold up. Kind of like a Wave Rider. Probably the original Wave Rider. So we'll plug that back in so that they face the back, not the front. And after unburying the head, What we will attempt to do is use the hinges in this headpiece to fold in and hide the face, which just barely reveals the angry eyes and mouth of Godbird. Yeah. <sighs> I love writing. I like my screamy robots. I love my super robots. But this... Xeon is going to say... Forget about it. While, like previous entries in the forget about it category, once you have it posed and in one fixed position, it looks fine. It looks like writing. It looks as he should. But once you get to moving it around, the construction, even the review aspect, it maybe... Even before the review aspect, when I was trying to fiddle with it and get it going, I had terrible, terrible trouble with that arm design. This, this key lock system, whatever you want to call it, this is bad design. This is a terrible idea for a scenario where you want to swap your arms out. It, you could have done without this key piece and your arm could have not fallen out all the time. It's, it, it's been done. It's been done for Gunpla for many years before this. And now, either over time or because I've played with it when I first built it, now that shoulder joint is so loose 
that I don't remember how I had it in the same pose for almost 10 years on my shelf without that arm drooping into oblivion. Many regrets. Many sads. But next time, on Plug Plug, and next time will be Plug Plug, we will get into something that I don't have to build to play with. Thank you all for watching. And as always, Teague Zeon.